We're painting the Knight Lancer's skeleton. Now, before we can commence painting, we have to prime. To prime the Knight's skeleton, I'm using Chaos Black spray paint. After a few blasts of that, we had a nicely undercoated Knight skeleton. Usually, I would airbrush prime my models, but it's nice and sunny outside at the moment, and it's a big miniature, so I felt it would be a good idea to do it outside where the sun would dry it and I'd have a lot more space. Also, I couldn't be asked to set the airbrush up. I need to do a little touch-up work, so out comes my wrinkly pot of Vallejo model colour black. I then thin the black rather a lot with just some water and touch up any areas the Chaos Black aerosol might have missed. It's important to touch up, else you might end up with a ruined finish. As the touch-up paint was quite thin, it took a little while to dry. I used this time to go and get a coffee or a snack. This time it was a Burger King, because I had been craving one for months. Today's big question is, what's better, a Burger King or a McDonald's? Let us know in the comments below, but you have to say why. Now, when I finish painting my knight, I hope he isn't too afraid to fight. Otherwise, we're going to have to call him Surrender. I'll get my coat. Now, this week, I have been mostly watching Midwinter Minis. He made a fantastic keeper of secrets from an old bootleg Barbie doll. It's brilliant. You should go and have a look if you haven't already. Dress up modern girl lets you activate your unique charm. She's also the most elegant. Now I tried to be clever next. I'm mixing Citadel Lead Belcher in with a little violet to give the metal a well violet tint. Then using the world's biggest dry brush, I proceeded to dry brush the entire night skeleton with this mix. Although out of shot, I also dry brushed up the arms and the metal parts of the banners. Oh, and the knight's head. Dry brushing the knight only took a few minutes, and it was only that long due to the size of it. Now sadly, the purple tint didn't really show up that much. I could have probably used even more purple in the mix. Sometimes you just have to try these things out to know what the result will be. You can theorise all you like, but until that brush hits the model, you never really know how it's going to turn out. So go ahead and experiment. What's the worst that can happen? Has anybody seen Tom Cruise? Because it's time to make a cocktail. This time I'm mixing Drakenhof Nightshade, Nuln Oil and Dritchy Violet together to make a wash. Using a big brush, I then gave all the metal areas a coating of my wash cocktail. Again, this didn't take too long to do with a big brush. I just had to be extra careful the wash didn't start pooling up on such a big miniature. There's a lot of hiding spots. Due to the nature of washes, we then have to wait what feels like a million years for it to dry. I think I myself left it overnight. It's always best to be sure. Disturbed, uncured washes can make a right mess of things. Talking of mess, look at the state of my fingers. I guess I should have worn some protection, but I just don't like the feeling of covering up, you know. It feels so much better with bare skin. You feel so much more in control of your brush. Anyway, now I need to go and wash this off in the sink. Now that paint took days to come off. There's still a little bit on my finger now. I didn't mean to give you the finger there, I do apologise. That wash went all over my fingers and right into my cuticles. The poor old lady on the till at Sainsbury's thought it was a big bruise on my finger due to that dark blue colour. With the wash dry, we have this, a nicely washed night skeleton. You can't really see many of those colours we added, can you? There's a hint in there, but I think we could have gone with more. So next up, we return to everyone's favourite metal base colour, Lead Belcher. What even is a Lead Belcher? Returning to that huge dry brush, we then give the knight's skeleton a good dry brushing with the Lead Belcher. Now due to it being a metal paint, you can see the results really fast. It's very satisfying. 
With that first dry brush highlight applied we have this. I already think it's starting to look really nice. If you were trying to save time, you could probably just end the painting for the skeleton here. Now obviously you would still have to go in and paint the other details, like the armour casing on the lance. There's also a few pipes here and there, but I think it would look pretty good even if you did only those few steps. The next paint is Vallejo Model Colour Silver. It's nice and bright. Again, using the world's biggest dry brush, we then dry brushed the entire night skeleton again. I didn't use anywhere near as much paint as the previous steps, so we only had a highlight on the most prominently raised areas. With the silver dry brush highlight applied, we have this. The silver metal parts are now done already. Now, if you ever wanted an army that's really, really quick to paint, Pick a silver one. Iron Warriors are an obvious choice. They're probably the easiest army to paint in the hobby. Even easier than Necrons, because the Necrons have got glowing green balls and things. Iron Warriors just have more dirty metal bits. We're now moving on to Retributor Gold. It's a good gold paint, as it covers well and it actually looks gold, which is always helpful for gold. Using the gold paint, I then paint a few areas around the knight skeleton to break it up a little. Add a little more visual interest as it were. There's a few nubs and hinges dotted around the knight that are perfect for this. With the gold areas painted, we have this. Notice the gold bits on the knight's thighs? They were a mistake. I shouldn't have done that, and I shall address it later on. This is what we call in the trade a mistake. Sometimes mistakes do be happening, and it's best not to worry about it. Just figure out what you did wrong, what you want to change, and do it. At the end of the day, you can always just repaint things that you don't like. Okay, so a slightly different silver paint next. It's a Model Air Chrome. I love this paint. Using the chrome, I then paint all the pistons and moving parts of the knight's skeleton. There's a few pistons dotted around, so try to make sure you don't miss any. With the chrome paint applied, we have this. I also painted any ball joints chrome too, like the ones at the bottom of the legs and some in the knight's crotch. Now that chrome paint gives those pistons a realistic look. It implies there's a constant moving in and out of the shaft. It's keeping the rod clean. I don't know what the proper name for it inside the piston. Is it a rod? I'm sure someone will let me know in the comments below. Next up, I need a grey. My dark grey is a little too dark, so I'm mixing in a little dark sea grey, which is a lot lighter than my dark grey. Very interesting. I then apply this mix to any areas I feel should look like rubber hosing. The cables that connect to the knight's rear end and the ribbed shafts that connect up to the hip joints. It wasn't a huge amount of work, but it was very easy to do. The knight is starting to come together now. Now I view those rubber parts like the flex joints in between Space Marine's arms and knees and things. We still haven't fixed this squeaky chair. Anyway, are those bits of rubber or are they some sort of metallic conduit? What do you guys think? For my next base coat colour, I shall be using Mephiston Red. Now back in the day, we never had a red paint that covered well, so when this first came out, I thought it was magic. Using the Mephiston Red, I then paint a few of the cables dotted around the knight's skeleton. There's some on the legs, a few on the arms, and a couple on the torso and the back. There were also some on the lance arm. This is another nice colour that breaks up all that silver. With that red applied, all our base coats are now finished. We can move on to shading now. Snakeworks Jr. and I found this very interesting looking caterpillar while we took a walk on our lunch break. I remember hearing stories about caterpillars being toxic and touching them would give you the shits. I still haven't looked that up. Anyway, this is the second odd caterpillar sighting since we started this video series. Coincidence? No, I think not. 
I'm going to do another experiment now with Dritchy Violet, so wish me luck. I apply the Dritchy Violet to all those gold areas. This is an almost complementary colour to the golds, so it should look quite interesting when it's applied. Back in the day, I mixed it in with Agrax Earthshade, but this time I figured I would try it neat. That purple wash has really dulled down the gold and given it an awesome weathered bronze look. I really like it, but it's not quite dull enough. Don't you just love it when an experiment works? Also, here's a tip. Always make sure you write down your experiments, what paints you used, how you mixed them and how it came out. This is good for future reference. It's amazing just how much you can learn and then just as quickly forget. Did that make sense? Next up, it's Seraphim Sepia. Mine is running a little low. Remind me to grab a new pot ASP, as my old mate Carl would say. I then apply the Seraphim Sepia to all those chrome areas, things like the pistons and moving parts. This is to simulate oil and grease, which pistons usually have on them. It's also more interesting again to look at. There's one really long piston on the lance. I have to admit, this one was great fun to paint. Be careful when you're applying this as it can get everywhere and you don't want to touch your wet wash and contaminate other areas of the miniature with your dirty fingers. Now sadly for me, adding washes to miniatures takes ages, especially if there's more than one wash colour. Myself, I always like to make sure one wash is completely dry before adding another one. Also, I don't like to use the old hair dryer, as I find it can make washes dry in strange ways. Does anyone know why that is? The next wash we shall be applying is Nuln Oil. This is the new version, which sadly comes in a smaller pot. What happened to the big pots? I want those back. I then apply the Nuln Oil to all those pipes and cables that we painted red, and the few we painted in the grey mix between the knight's legs, the rubber areas. This is a nice easy stage, and it's hard to mess it up. You can see here the results of the wash. It's added shading and definition to those pipes and cables. That's almost it for the washers. Just one more to go. Eagle-eyed viewers will notice I repainted the knight's thighs from the gold to the chrome in those clips. I just thought I would make you aware in case you wondered why something looked a little bit different. Now, if you want to get your own Serastus Knight Lancer kit to hopefully paint right the first time, then check out the little link up here somewhere. I'll put one down in the description below as well. Here we are, our last wash, Agrax Earthshade. MVP of most painters washing arsenals. I then apply a sparing coat of this to all the areas we washed with the purple from before. This is to dull it down a little more. I don't want the knight skeleton being the prominent part of the miniature when it's completed. Now, as I'm an idiot, it would appear I never took any footage of that wash applied and dried. Or I just lost the footage somewhere. Sometimes that happens. The joys of being a content creator, eh? I do apologise for that missing clip. If you want a written apology, which some of you probably do, I know what you're like, especially you, then feel free to come and tell me on our Discord channel. Our friendly Discord channel, I should say. Is it called a channel? I think it's a server is the correct name. I'll put a link up here somewhere. Also, there's one down in the description below. We shall be looking forward to hearing from you there. Okay, so now we return to the Mephiston Red. And also don't look at the pink thing in the background. Too late. I then reapply the Mephiston Red to all those pipes we painted red. But this time I'm leaving the wash in the recesses and only concentrating on the upper and larger areas of the pipes. Then I make a little mix of the Mephiston Red and some Vallejo model colour Orange Red. I apply this mix as a highlight again to those red cables. I'm only applying this sparingly to the upper areas of the pipes, areas that would receive the most light. Then lastly, I'm going to use the Vallejo Orange Red by itself. Using the Orange Red, I add a final highlight to those red areas. I didn't go too heavy as I wanted it to look like red still. 
If I added too much, it would just look orange. Now, while I put my paints away, I just want to give a massive shout out and thanks to all my Patreon and YouTube channel members. Dan Yallop, Lee Blackley, Donald, Pine Tree, Bobzilla, Charles Marlowe, Andrew Marrington, and Dr. Lee. Thank you all so, so much. I love you loads. Before I show you the finished article, I just want to show you something interesting. I've noticed about the Vallejo model color orange red paint. If you turn the bottle on its end, it says, if you're enjoying this video, then please consider liking it and subscribing to the channel. That means you will. If you are enjoying the content here on the channel, then please consider joining us on Patreon, the link to which is in the description below, or up here somewhere. So without further ado, let's check out the finished article, shall we? So here it is, the finished Serastus Knight Lancer skeleton. I'm really happy with how it's turned out. Now, although we had a little hiccup in the middle there with the golden thighs, a quick repaint did the trick of getting it back on course. I think I've achieved my goal of keeping it interesting but subtle enough that it shouldn't take attention away from the armor panels when we get to those next. I've something interesting in mind for those, so I'm quite excited about moving forward now. Hopefully, we'll see you in the next video. If you want to see some more videos in this series, then check out the playlist up here somewhere. And as always, thank you very much for watching.